Alright, let's start this week with a scene. Oh, chocolate hazelnut, you're worth the extra insulin. <laughs> when I was done, I rolled the bread up and bit the end. My mouth glued shut as I chewed while the spread smeared my cheek. Are we having Nutella? Glad I was eating breakfast alone. I was being sloppy, like I usually am. Bonjour. Huh? Huh? Someone lightly pecked me on one cheek. The person immediately pulled back, and I hastily rubbed my face while he did the same. What? Oh! <laughs> I knew it was you, DeAndre! <laughs> Bonjour. Ugh, DeAndre! I was stuffing my face! At least warn me next time before you kiss me. I could say the same. What? Huh? What? What was with the kiss, anyway? This is going along very quickly. It's how we greet friends. Usually the cheek kissing goes a little smoother than this one. Hmm. He eyed my breakfast and snorted teasingly. <laughs> Cute, Mel. Hey, I wasn't expecting everyone to arrive so soon. Don't judge me. Did you drive here? We took the train. It only stops here every half an hour, so you either arrive early or slightly late. Before I could question the we, Deanne, DeAndre tapped the side of his cheek. Mm-hmm. Friends, eh? Oh. I thought you wanted me to kiss you back. Um, you still have some... You too. Still? Did you dunk your face into... I did not. Your timing was just atrocious, okay? <laughs> Kyler's just watching the whole thing go on. Nice shirt. While we were both cleaning ourselves, I noticed Kyler observing us with a deadpan expression. Mm-hmm. That's the perfect, um, descriptor right there. He frowned in disgust and disappeared around the corner with his belongings. You're just mad because you didn't get a Nutellicus. <sighs> DeAndre rubbed his temples like he had an impending headache. I don't think he likes me. Hmm? Something happened? Well... Do you remember that rowdy night? <laughs> um, vaguely. Well, after you went to bed, a bunch of us started playing catch. I may or may not have nailed Kyler in the head with the ball. I'm surprised he was actually so socializing. Uh, was he okay? Yeah, he was fine, if upset. I tried to apologize, but he wouldn't hear of it. Now he probably thought I was shamelessly flirting with you like some full-time playboy. Which you were. Oh, you aren't. Wink wink. Part-time. <laughs> Kyler seems to be the type where first impressions are everything. I agree. I didn't exactly start off on the right foot with him either. Mostly because I'm not trying to. Huh, so we're both in the same boat. About the ball incident. Hmm. Should we volunteer to smooth the ice? Kyler's already absolutely disgusted with uh, with DeAndre. Maybe we will talk and be like, hey, we weren't flirting or anything, and he didn't mean to whack you in the head with a paw. Eh, leave it to me. My square is next to his anyway, so I'll be able to talk to Kyler anytime. Really? It's not a big deal, but let him know I apologize for that. A few other students trickled in, and I finished my breakfast before there were any more mishaps. Anyway, where did you stay this weekend? I furiously chewed my oversized portion, but DeAndre flashed me a patient, I'll wait, smile. Oh, is that what this face is right here? Uh, I simply tapped the window. Uh, I tapped the window. <laughs> I tapped the table. Since I couldn't talk. I hate when that happens where you're like furiously chewing and it just seems to take longer and longer. Here? How was it? I survived. There was no ghost. When a car pulled in, I knew Augustine and Sherry had arrived. I waved to them as they got out, although inwardly I wanted to whine to Augustine about the whole ghost thing. After Sherry and I greeted each other, she handed my journal back. 
be sure to read the comments in the journal when you have time. It'll give you an idea of how you're performing. Thank you, I will. Also, since this is your second week here, you now have the option to pick lab work if you'd like. I noticed. Oh, right. I'll notify Hendrik. He handles the lab 101 here and can explain the procedures to you. Nice, it seems my options have opened up. Sweet as. <laughs> there sure are a lot of stuff and things here. <laughs> hey, Hendrik, also got a new shirt. I perked up as Hendrik tapped the whiteboard with his prosthetic fingers, his speech continuing in French. Oh, prosthetic fingers. So many interesting people here. His lecture was occasionally interrupted with polite giggles or groans, and he would grin at their reactions. Haha, <laughs> more puns. Hendrik loved to deliver puns in any language, I mused. Once the explanation wrapped up, people collected plastic bags, each with a sheet inside. Some barely contained any material, while others had huge bones encased in tinfoil. I grabbed a decently sized one with mostly smaller items and fished out the feech along with a wrapped item. Is this your first time doing lab work? Yes, Sherry's gone over the procedures with a slide presentation, but it's different seeing it all up close. If you'd like, I can clarify a few things. I thought it'd be easier to do a little one-on-one -on -one instead of repeating myself in both languages and taking up more time. Really? Then... Oh boy, more things! I thought we were past the stage! Okay. So... what do we do, essentially? Can you break down the lab process in its simplest form? Clean objects. Document them. Repeat. That's it. That's it. That was sure short and sweet. When you've worked with many students with varying degrees of interest in archaeology, it helps to be concise. It's my own take on the KISS principle. Keep it simple for students. <laughs> Alright, it works for me. How to clean the items. There's so many tools used to clean. What's the general routine? He leaned over and pointed to the plastic bowl with a sieve placed over it. Depending on how dirty the item is, use this to wash the majority of the soil off. If it's a bone, please don't let it stay submerged for too long, or it'll become saturated. It will end up damaging the object, especially if it's already cracked or flaking. Other times, you simply need to dunk a brush into the water if you're only cleaning a small section. Be sure to dry it thoroughly using a paper towel or lint-free cloth. Whether you use that step or not, it's on to using brushes and craft sticks. I know about brushes, but craft sticks? They're great for scraping muck off without scratching the remains. I'm partial to craft sticks myself, but everyone has their own preference. If you use a brush, be gentle and don't scrub too hard. And there are toothpicks, which are useful for cleaning teeth or porous items. If the object is relatively clean to begin with and doesn't need water, you can simply brush the dirt off. Be careful, though. Some bones are too fragile to wash or clean. Use your judgment. There will be a little trial and error at first, but you'll get the hang of it. Don't worry, I won't get upset if a bone falls apart. Oh, phew. <laughs> Says the geologist. What if I drop a rock? Handle those with extreme care, please. I will, promise. I'm gonna like Hendrik, I think. Why a nib pen? I picked up the ink bottle and gave him an uncertain look. Why these? It looks like it'll be a messy process, and I've never used a nib pen before. It stays on the bone or stone better than a regular ink pen, regardless of surface, and you have better control over the writing. I'm terrible at describing how to use one. I think if you hold it slightly lower than a regular pen, and lightly pull, the ink should flow out ev evenly. Obviously, don't dunk the nib into the ink bottle like cookies and milk. <laughs> Also, follow the number style I've written on the board. I turned my head, studying the 1 to 9 that went down in a vertical column. The 3 was flat at the top, and the 7 had an extra line in the middle of it. Then I had a... the... oh, the 1 had a little hook at the top with a foundation. Is it to keep everything more consistent? That, and we don't panic if a number fades. See... He approached the board and wrote a bubbly 8. 
He then wiped half of it, turning it into a three. This is why. Same with a seven. If we lose a part of it, we won't mistake it for a one due to the line in the middle. It's extremely important to be able to identify its number. When you're done jotting down the feature number and year, don't forget to coat it with a thin layer of clear nail polish to protect the ink. Make sure you let the ink dry first or it'll become all blurry. What happens if I mess up? I have a feeling whiteout won't help here. Ah, then this is the fun part. You can use the nib to scrape off the ink. Or scrap off the ink. I don't recommend using it multiple times over the same surface, though. Then you'll end up destroying the very item we're trying to preserve. What if the object is impossible to write on due to its size? Then place it in the tray cup along with a written piece of paper that came with it. Although, try your best to write in a partial line, since it's possible to lose the paper over time. Please write neatly so I don't end up cursing your name next year when I get around to them. <laughs> I will do my best, sir. Go over the tools used. Can you sum up each tool and its use for me? Sorry if there's overlap. It's fine. It's important to clarify. There's the water, the sieve, and the bowl for washing. Other instruments include brushes of various size, craft sticks, toothpicks, cloth and paper towel for drying, and when it's all written down and coated with nail polish, you can drop the items in the cups set up on the trays over there. He pointed to row upon row of wooden trays, each with cups super glued to the surface. Some had bigger containers for the obviously larger objects, too. That way they'll dry out in the sun. I'll take care of everything when the lab work is done, so you don't have to worry about the rest. Okay. <laughs> any other tips you can think of? Um, any tricks or tips you can think of off the top of your head? Other than what I've told you? Just be gentle and use your best judgment. Don't mix up the items, please, and be sure to clean up the utensils when you're all done. Okay, short and sweet again. Don't these things get contaminated? Isn't it harder to extract DNA after you wash them? Plus, we're touching with our bare hands. Even just breathing while you're digging contaminates exposed material. It's virtually impossible to avoid tainting samples unless you catch it early while excavating. We'd rather have items clean so we can identify their morphology or possible Neanderthal manipulation of these items. Like... Burnt bone, cuts in bone from flint, tool manufacturing... The stuff I hope avoided ended ending up in the wet screening process and has its context marked and identified on the document. Alright. I'm good. I think I got everything. Thanks for the help, Hendrik. Gein problem. <laughs> uh-huh. I'll mostly be helping out in the lab, working alongside the other students. Hendrik? Need help with anything? Could you supervise my first cleaning? Of course. I know lab work can be... tough. Oh, gosh. Oh! Another minigame! Oh, here we go. Oh, boy. Here we have our tools. Toothpick, brush, craft stick, cloth, and the water sieve. Remember that we're dealing with mostly fragile objects, and it'd be too time-consuming to clean each one perfectly. The idea is to make the object recognizable. Luckily, you're cleaning a piece of chert, so let's wash it off in the sieve. In this minigame, you must pick tools to get as close to the target force as possible. Target force. Each tool has a different force. Okay. So the amount of pressure you apply. Hover over each tool to see what it is, then select the bucket sieve tool. Toothpick, brush, craft stick, cloth, bucket sieve. Pretty straightforward. As you can see, it revealed a number, the tool's force, below it. This will only happen to the first tool selected. Okay. There we go. I'm going to use the cloth to wipe it down. Now select the cloth tool. Although you can't see the rest of the tool's forces, their values will always go lowest to highest, from top left to bottom right. Two, three, four, seven, nine. Okay, so is it always 1 to 9, or is it always 2, 3, 4, 7, 9? Because then that's really easy to remember. It looks pretty clean now, just a bit of dirt in the crevices. You can select up to as many tools as you want. 
However, for this tutorial, you can only pick three in total. Choose your last tool. Well, this is a nine, this is a seven. Then that's 16. So you want to use the craft stick because that's four, right? Yeah. Compare the target force to your force. How close did you get? Spot on. You unlocked a new journal entry. Chert. I'll have to read about that later. Great job. You will unlock new journal entries and stat bonuses whenever you get good results. But don't let your stress get too high, else you won't get as many chances to clean. There. Done. Great. You can let it dry off before riding on it. I feel there's a bit of luck involved. Uh, each game starts with randomly generated forces that can be anywhere between 1 and 9. Again, values always go lowest to highest from top left to bottom right. It is. Some sturdy looking bones start crumbling as soon as you touch them, and some are already in awful condition. I'd rather see a slightly dirty object intact than a clean broken one, if that makes sense. The goal is to either match the target force or get within four points below it. If you go over, the object will break. I guess that makes sense. It can take up to a force of 20, but if you applied more than that, it would break. So don't push it if you feel that's as clean as it'll get. You got it. Oh, excuse me. Need to help another student. No problem. Thanks, Hendrik. Now for the next one. And it's not a rock this time. Hendrik drifted away to answer questions from other students while I gingerly unwrapped one of the items in the tin foil. It was a tiny tooth with only minimal dirt attached to the root. At least it was an easy one to work with. I dunked a toothbrush into the water and began to scrub it. I dried it off and set it on the cloth and uncapped the ink bottle and neatly dipped the nib into it. Gently, gently. I had barely touched the tooth with the nib when a giant splotch of ink dispersed and penetrated the root, and now resembled a squished black spider. Ugh. Aww. I cleaned the nib and scraped the blotch the best I could. It seemed to work, but it also scratched into the tooth. It's harder than it looks. I'm already missing the cave. Yeah, me too, Melissa. Of course, this was where the real discoveries would take place where everything was catalogued and identified for further examination. I would also be graded for my lab work, so it wasn't something I could avoid entirely. Time to see if I can finish this one, at least. Uh, okay. Aw, she's so cute! Yeah, winky face, she did it. You have six more objects to clean in lab today, good luck! Uh, uh. Okay. Um, so I got 20 again. So that's a seven, so it'll be a one to a seven. I should be able to take, let's see. Let's say this is 13. And this could be a five, that would be 18. At the most, at the most this is 18. Be able to get a toothpick in too, but I don't know if I should. Hmm. All right, let's check. 18. Okay, you're only two points away. Nice and clean. Okay, I could have used a toothpick, but I didn't want to. Didn't want to chance it. All right, this is an eight. So I use this at the most will be a seven. That will be s fifteen. This could be as high as a six. Mm, that'd be too high. Oh, 17. Only three points away. Nice and clean. Whew. Okay, good thing I didn't pick the, cra the uh, craft stick. Target force 15. Okay, that's a nine. This would be too high, because it could be an eight. And that would give me 17. This could be as high as a 7. That'd give me 16. Hmm. Let's try a craft stick. 12. Okay. Whew. 25. Okay, that's a 9. 
the most this is 17 plus a 6 would be 23. I could probably. <gasps> Woo! <laughs> I got so excited. Like, yeah! Target force 33. 9. 8. 17 plus 6. No, oh, no, wait. That would be seven. Ooh, I actually, un I, uh, <laughs> that could have been bad last time. Uh, okay, um, nine plus eight is seventeen plus six. No, plus seven. Seventeen plus seven is twenty-four. Plus six is thirty. I think we'll just leave it there. Ooh, four points off. That's still too dirty. Whoops. I thought, oh, within four points, fine. Fine. Eight plus seven is 15. Plus six is too much, plus five is too much. Toothpick. Whew, okay. You did an amazing job today. Hell right I did. I unlocked a new journal ent entry, Copperlite. Look at me, I didn't do too bad for my first time. What kind of bone is this? A tooth? It was the size of the palm of my hand with wave-like ridges on the outside. Who should I ask? Ask Hendrik or ask Sherry? Um, I won't ask Hendrik. We'll ask him on his route. Oh, Sherry! Sherry, I have a question. Yes? What bone is this? It looks like a tooth, but... I handed it to her and she turned it over, examining it closely. Why, it's a tooth of a woolly rhinoceros! An upper molar, to be exact. How can you tell? Their molars have a very characteristic shape if you look at the ridge here. It's like a W. Right! You see this in horse teeth as well. It helps with sharing tough plant material. Still, you identified it so fast. Once you've worked with hundreds of them, it becomes second nature. It's either ha Hendrik or Augustine. What are we looking at? Have we discovered something valuable? No, it was Augustine. Well, what are we looking at? Have we discovered something valuable? Sherry turned and held up the tooth. Augustine barely glanced at it. You've seen one silly Coelodonta antiquitatis, upper molar. You've seen them all. Ugh. At least I know for next time. Thanks, Sherry. Sherry has become such an expert in identifying animal fauna, considering she started in forensics. Forensics? Really? I know you teach it, but I didn't know that was your career, too. Yes. Although the aims may be different, the goal is to identify human remains and forensic... Oh, human remains. Ahem. Period. In forensic anthropology, you mainly deal with recovering modern remains in a legal context, while archaeology is broader and spans history. Interesting. How did you get into archaeology? I was called in to assist a colleague with a sacred burial ground. We identified the remains for historical purposes and then reburied them again. Wow, I had no idea. You could say she has literal skeletons in her closet. True, most of the skeletons used in my classes are donations or being borrowed from those sites. The rest are her previous lovers. Augustine, you jest! That was my first husband. Uh, um, did... Melissa, you should resume cleaning now that we've identified the tooth. Right. <laughs> I'll do that. Aw, that's so cute! Your little apron's adorable! Alright. I was braver this time. Instead of sitting at the end of the bench, I positioned myself right in the middle, hoping to mingle with other students. I eyed the carton of apple juice that was out of my reach. I did not want to stand up and reach over, since that would seem rude. 
However, I wasn't sure if I could communicate clearly to the people beside me. It was worth a shot, though, and I did try to brush up on my French when I had the chance. Oh boy. Oh gosh, oh boy, oh no, oh boy. Alright, let's try. Please, pronunciation, don't fail me now! Um... I hesitantly extended my fingers toward the item. Excusez-moi. Oh, Chantal. Chantel. Is it Chantel or Chantal? Probably Chantel. Hmm? Pouvez-vous, s'il vous plaît, pouvez-vous, s'il vous plaît, passer le jouet de pomme? <laughs> the girl clapped a hand to her mouth in shock, then excitedly gestured with one arm in the air. Quoi? Tout le monde? Et parler français? Pour te répéter? Um. Répéter! Repeat! I stammered out the line, but finished strongly. Moments later, everyone applauded. <laughs> um. Merci. As the claps died down, I felt a little more welcome here. It was rather encouraging. But it wasn't getting my juice any faster. Joan! Finally! It seemed my thoughts were heard, and the juice carton appeared beside my plate. I glanced up, and the redhead across from me smiled. Thank you. Recognizing each other, we exchanged, we exchanged a grin. Merci beaucoup. You're welcome. Joan and I met already. I'm Melissa. We did. I missed it. Chantel, sorry for the spotlight, but I thought a little cheering would help. It's fine. I appreciate it. I poured my drink while Joan eyed me curiously. Chantel, she is from the States. Yep, California to be exact. Beaches, bikinis, movie stars, and all that jazz. To come all this way, you want to be an archaeologist as well? I'm still considering a few options, but I've been enjoying it here. It's incredible to be surrounded by all this history. What about you two? What degrees are you taking? Chantel translated for me, and Joan brightened as she raised her fingers close to her cheek and wriggled them. Music! I play flute. Neat! How do you say flute in French? <laughs> Chantel chuckled loudly, but managed to relay the question to Joan, who giggled. <laughs> La flute! Why am I not surprised? But isn't that nice? It helps with learning a language if many of the words are identical or similar. If all else fails, say the word in English. There's a chance we might understand. Are you monolingual? Um, well... <laughs> Pretty much, yes. Um, I know some Spanish. I'm not sure if it counts, but... Solo hablo un poquito de español. Joan tilted her head while Chantel leaned in ardently. ¿Hablas español? ¿Me puedes enseñar español? Um, tal vez. Oh man, Chantel knows too much. Where did you learn it? My parents speak it, and I was much more fluent growing up, but I've sort of gotten rusty. Are you learning Spanish? Chantel pouted between a spoonful of cereal sprinkled with cocoa powder. I'd like to, but the Spanish class has conflicted with my other courses. I want to go to South America or the Caribbean, so I'd like to master both English and Spanish. We both glanced back at Joan, who patiently tried to follow along. Chantel quickly summed up our conversation, and Joan nodded. This is such an interesting conversation. Chantel wants to dig underwater. I'm interested in underwater archaeology. Sadly, this elective is not what I'm looking for, but the choices were pretty limited. I guess the cave can get damp occasionally, if that counts. I admit, underwater archaeology was not a field I had given much thought to. Why underwater? Are you... looking for underwater ruins or cities? Searching for pirate ships and sunken treasure? Looking for Atlantis? Hmm. Obviously looking for Atlantis. Hoping to uncover Atlantis? <laughs> Chantel shook her head. 
please. I'm not into chasing myths or legends. I'm more into pirates and actual sunken cities. I'd like to excavate something like Port Royal, the infamous Jamaican city that was partially submerged after an earthquake. There's already been multiple investigations at Port Royal, and it makes me anxious. I really want to start enjoying something amazing like that. I feel by the time I graduate, everything about Port Royal will be studied and then left alone and forgotten like Grote de Spy. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. Archaeologists rediscovered Pompeii hundreds of years ago, and the excavations are still ongoing. These things take time, like... Kalen, of course. I pause to let Chantel summarize our conversation again. <laughs> oh, that's so cute! She sticks her tongue out. <laughs> Joan giggled and responded in a sentence so soft I couldn't catch it. What did she say? Joan says she's a super slow digger in Grote de Calen. I know no archaeology. Chantel helps. More like I reassure her I'll help and then wonder if I should bother Mr. Dupont. I'm thankful for Mrs. Keller. She's very patient. And I guess there's Hendrick now, too, right? He seems pretty approachable. He is, and, uh, he's definitely geologist-y. Chantel tilted her head toward the far end of the table. I could see him socializing with Sherry and Augustine, obviously playing catch-up. And he's Beau, too. He's supervising the labs now. Maybe they won't be so boring this time around. Have you done them yet? Only recently. Sherry encouraged me to focus on the cave last week. The lab's not bad, but there's a lot to take in. I find it tedious. John, am I to les laboratoires? Non, non, non. It is tedious? Boring? If you'd like, maybe the three of us could work in the lab together. That'd be fun. Sounds like a plan. Joan picked up her empty plate and I did the same. It was nice talking to you, Melissa. Nice talking to you. I'll see you both later. My grin didn't fade after we parted ways. It felt wonderful to branch out and introduce myself to more people. We've got some friends, how lovely. I finally made some female friends. <laughs> finally, it only took two weeks. Why did that take so long anyway? Oh, I failed at the lab. Oh no, here we go again. <laughs>